Welcome, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master, and you're watching my channel. Today I'm going to do something I call a throwback game. This is where I reach back to, in my library and pull out a classic game, one that hasn't been seen in a few years. Now I can pull out things from Virtual Console and other downloadable services, but they have to be released on cartridge format first. So let's see what game my Magic Boomerang I am holding pulls back for me to review. Well, it sure pulled back an interesting one for me to review. It pulled back Star Fox, one of the more interesting games on the Super Nintendo. Now, this is one a game that may have spawned a major Nintendo franchise, but we have yet to see the original on the Virtual Console. I have looked into it, and there are many theories. Some say that um, there's trouble emulating the Super FX chip. However, I have a recorded this on something called a Retron 3, which is a Super Nintendo clone console because my Super Nintendo's AC adapter went out recently, so I picked up one of the clone consoles and it ran this game just perfectly. Also works on the Retron 5, which is all emulation based. So the fact that Nintendo couldn't build an emulator to support this is now kind of defunct. However, I hear there's also licensing reasons behind the Super FX chip that Nintendo doesn't own the full copyright for the software, so it can't put anything on the Virtual Console without paying tons of money, and that's the reason why we have yet to see a Super Nintendo game with a Super FX chip in it on the Virtual Console. And folks, this isn't just Star Fox here. It also covers games like Yoshi's Island. As for my personal history with the game, I remember when I was about 12 and this game came out and my brother was pressuring me to get it because he's now an airline pilot and he loved anything as a kid that dealt with airplanes and fighting even though he himself wasn't a gamer and wasn't about to spend the money on it. I told him no and got Tiny Toons instead. Do I regret it? No, because Tiny Toons Buster Bust Loose is one of the best Super Nintendo games I've ever played. That said, I did pick this one up a few months later, and it's not a bad game either. Star Fox, though, has its age spots, and that's one of the reasons why I also could see why Nintendo wouldn't want to pony up money to put it on the Virtual Console. It's not a terrible game, don't get me wrong. There's definitely worse games on both the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console. But it's aged, and it's got another problem that it's got a successor, a remake, sequel, or whatever you would want to call it in Star Fox 64, which is just like it, but so much better. So much better. So here's the story of Star Fox, if you never played it before, or played 64, because Star Fox 64 is 90% the same story. Basically, what happens is Andros is a mad scientist on Corneria. He threatens to destroy the planet. General Pepper captures him, sends him to Venom in exile. A few years later, a huge army comes out of Venom and starts taking over the Lilat system. The major difference between the original in the um, N64 version is that in the N64 version Star Fox is mercenary while in the original Super NES there are a bunch of space outlaws that were kicked out of the Cornerian military. Which, although small difference, kind of makes you wonder about General Pepper's intelligence here. Come on, think about it. He created the problem. He knew Andros was this mad scientist that could do great evil things. He captured him, and instead of doing this... Yeah, all he had to do was put a bullet in the guy's head when he captured him, and this whole mess wouldn't have started. And for those of you who think I'm being a bit dour saying that, let me remind you, as part of the original game storyline, one of Andros's experiments created a black hole in the middle of the Lilat system. So Pepper's response to that was to capture the guy, send him to Venom where he has the resources to build an army, and cause more problems. Genius. Of course, also the guy who threw out Fox and his friends from the Cornerian 
army was also Pepper, so he threw out the only people who could actually fly and fight. Congratulations, Princess Peach. You are no longer the biggest idiot that's in a Nintendo game. It goes to this guy who probably stinks worse than a Bassett should. Now, the graphics are going to be kind of tricky for me to review, and they're very important. The game was sold on its graphics, the Super FX chip, and the way it was going to change gaming back in the day. Now, I know a lot of you kids are looking at this and probably laughing because they kind of look like origami fighters just fighting and blowing stuff up. It looks pixelated, it looks slow, but back then it was pretty impressive. You have to remember, the Super Nintendo was a 2D system. It could mimic 3D with Mode 7, but this was completely different. These were actually 3D models. You can even see the camera shift in a few of the scenes. So it's very impressive for its day, but unfortunately it also doesn't hold up. What really brings it down is the frame rate. It just gets clunky and sometimes even slows down and that can get you killed. With all that criticism out of the way though, the FX chip and the 3D graphics wasn't just a one trick pony. The game designers did what they with what little they had to create a really impressive 3D environment. Just look here. You're on a planet with giant animals, you're shooting birds, dragons are popping out everywhere, and you even see clouds and moon and even some of the landscape change. It's pretty impressive for its time. Like I said, it hasn't aged well. I don't think there'd be too many kids who would really want to sit down and play this today. But I can understand people who owned a Genesis at the time, or are into old games wanting to try to experience this and are disappointed that it's not on the virtual console, but as I said before, the N64 one is just so much better. Now for the sound, I should tell you, Star Fox wasn't just known for its great graphics, it also had some pretty awesome music for the day, some decent sound effects, the laser blasts, the explosions, and even when you die, sound great. It also had voice acting. Listen here. Good luck. Incoming enemy. Now I know some of you kids out there aren't very impressed with the few voice samples that are in this game, but 20 years ago that was kind of flooring to hear speaking in a game, and there's even a short conversation between Fox and Pepper at the very end of the game. It's pretty impressive for the day. Now as far as your wingmen go, well they just be gibberish like this. <laughs> Now on to what's the most important aspect of any game, new or old, is the gameplay. How does it hold up? And this is where the original Star Fox stumbles just a bit. Now the gameplay is still pretty solid, don't get me wrong, it's not broken. The idea is that it's an on-rail shooter of sorts, where you fly your plane straight through a level, blasting enemies, dodging, fire, and collecting rings for health power-ups. You'll occasionally find Twin Blaster power-ups and Smart Bomb power-ups which will blow up and clear the entire screen. You get to a boss at the end, um, you fight the boss and you blow up the boss and you continue on to the next stage. Repeat this four or five times, but there's a little more to it than that. First off, there's three different routes you can take through the game, each with their own different stages, including Corneria. You'll start with Corneria in each one of these routes, however, Corneria will be different depending on the route. So, you know, you really got three ways of playing the game. And on the plus side, the boss fights are legendary. Some of the bosses show some very creativity, like this boss here in Sector Y where I have to shoot the arms in order to hurt him. However, if he shoots a uh, plasma bolt at the same time that I shoot the arms, his arms come off and I'm unable to damage him until he regrows his arms, but each time one of his arms blows up they get shorter allowing me to damage him more. Um, there's other ones like the rock crusher here 
which I have to blow up the laser turrets and then blow up the center. And then, of course, the attack carrier, which did make its way into Star Fox 64. A lot of the bosses are very entertaining and interesting. But this is the last thing I want to say good about the game, because the rest of the game has problems, starting with your wingmen. At certain parts in every stage, one of your three wingmen will randomly call for help. You then have to shoot the fighter that's behind them, and they'll give you things. Basically, your only reward for this is they stay up front, supposedly shooting enemies, but oftentimes they end up getting in your way more than helping. The only other thing they really do is occasionally they'll come out and blast enemies for you. And if you shoot the enemies they're supposed to shoot, you'll hear them complain at you. They're worthless. You can't shoot them down in this one like Star Fox 64. The enemies have to do it at those certain points. But if you do let their health decline, they don't come back. Once they're gone, they're dead. But that's not a bad thing in this one, because like I said, they're worthless, so let the frog croak. <laughs> and gamers everywhere give a huge cheer at the death of that frickin' toad. Now I have to go into the stage balance, and that's where the game has its most problems with its challenge. The first two routes, you won't notice any balancing problems. They're pretty easy and straightforward. There's a few challenges towards the end on each one of them, but for the most part, they're pretty easy. It's that last route on the bottom where it's the longest and the hardest. The stages take forever, and there's an extra stage added to it that you have to fly through. So it's really a long, rolling trek. And the enemies hit hard, and there's just a lot of stuff to fly through in some of the stages. And the big setback on these stages is when you die and you lose your hyper beams that you may have picked up. Because when you have those hyper beams, they're way overpowered, but dying, you lose them. And the problem is, is there isn't any twin blasters. There's only one twin blaster per stage in most stages. So when you die, you really get a setback. And it really just shows the last little third course way off kilter and challenge because you need them to have that hyper blaster because the bosses will just tear you up really quick. I give Star Fox for the SNES a 3 out of 5. It's got good graphics for the time but they haven't aged well. I don't see someone who was brought up on the newer consoles going back and really enjoying this game especially because of the look. It's got some decent gameplay, but the fact that it's off balance, especially on that final hard mode and harder than heck, kind of kills the enjoyment for me. I wouldn't mind dying so much if there were more twin blaster power-ups to replenish my firepower. Still not a bad game. If you have a Super Nintendo, it might be worth going out and looking for it. I'm not really saying Nintendo should bring this to the virtual console, because for $2 more, you could get an N64 game, Star Fox 64, which is a way better game than this. Anyways, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel.